Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. I want to share with everyone an exclusive interview I had with the family of missing 39-year-old Chelsea Woods. Chelsea Woods from Clinton, Arkansas, Van Buren County. She went missing August 28th, 2022. She has still not been found and her family want answers. And I'm going to share this interview. It's a very powerful interview. Uh, the, her family member gets very emotional. Her name is Renee Hastings. She is at the forefront of trying to find out what happened to her niece, Chelsea Woods. So check this interview out. I'm praying for this family. Check this out. Hi, Renee. Sorry about that. Can you hear me all right now? I can hear you right now. This was good. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe you never used um, StreamYard before or something. I haven't. I, I've already had several people watching this and uh, people are having questions. So I hope people can hear us talking too. <laughs> yeah. So we're not live right now. This is pre-recorded. I'm recording right now and I'll just post this um, you know, later and stuff like that because I just think you're your, your, you know, your, your niece's situation is in a dire need to get answers, right? Yes. And, yes. I'm, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and, and I, and I finished off my um, live stream by saying, you know, the unknown is just probably eating you guys alive, you know, like just, I can't imagine what you and your family is going through because generally you care because I've been seeing on the news that you've been personally taking the forefront and out there, you know, organizing and go, going out there from back and forth from Tennessee to Arkansas. Uh, how many times you've been back and forth? Well, it's been a few times. Um, see, her mother, I'm telling you, I'm scared she's going to have a heart attack or something. My, she's so frail. And th that's why I'm trying to do as much as I can, because my sister, she just can't. She just can't. And I know some people say, well, she, you could not, she's so frail at this point, you could knock her over with a feather. You know what I mean? And I not try to take this off of her because this is the worst thing ever. And, and I'm telling you, Jonathan, the police, I don't understand that little bit right there. And, and there's so many questions around that, that little deal with them. You know, they're the last ones, and even the police report was wrong. I mean, this is, uh, and they didn't even have a police report until like a month or so later when I was calling everybody, and they're like, you need to copy the police report. And I said, yes, I do. And you get to reading it, and there's things in there wrong. I think they went ahead and just wrote something up. They didn't even originally had one. So when you say police report, uh, what agency are you particularly talking about? Burn County Sheriff's Department. Van Buren County. So are they the lead investigation on this on this um, case? And there was something I didn't tell you uh, because now something has surfaced in Monticello and they kind of have wanted me to keep quiet about it. But I'm just tired of dancing around them. Now, I'm talking to Drew County, which is Monticello. That's three hours from Clinton. That's where her ex is from. And Chelsea has lived in Monticello. A crate has surfaced. I have pictures in a pond. And it's on her ex-boyfriend's mother's land. And it's been there. And they had to get a search warrant to open it. And I said... When are y'all going to get in this crate to look? Even if it's nothing, I want to know, you know. And uh, when did this go? Uh, when did this crate come to surface? That's something that you knew uh, about this. Um, I have this friend, she's from Clinton, and she has helped me so much. She's went above and beyond. And they have contacted her, and she contacted me. So Van Buren, I talked to him. Uh, oh, yesterday, I, my days run together. And they said, we are on it. Or we can't. Of course, it's Van Buren's investigation. 
And um, they have to have a search warrant before they can even pull that crate out. And look, it may be nothing. But it's a crate. Supposedly, the ex-boyfriend was seen September 1st couple back days. there at that pond. A couple days after she was reported missing. Yes. So what are you supposed to think? So you're saying that th this is out on his mom's property that's three hours away from where she went missing. Um, yes. When you say X, just remind everyone, who is the X again? What is his name? Colby Snow. Colby Snow. Snow. Colby Snow. And was at the beginning stages when Chelsea went missing, was Colby cooperating at all? Was he helping searching? Was he around? No, he wasn't help searching, but, you know, he said, I can't search. I got this order of protection. She's got on me, this and that. It was like lack of interest. But then we found out that she, he had went to the cabin and got all of her stuff. He got all of her stuff. Yeah. Why? What did because he get? All, yeah. What? Why would you go get her stuff? How do you know she's not coming back? What? When did he do this? What? When did he go get her stuff? Like a, a week or so after she goes missing. Do you know what he got? Shoes, probably computers, computer, um, and I know for a fact the cops found a, a old man that bought the cabin afterwards, found two phones in that shed, in, in that cabin thing, in the insulation, and they turned them over to the cop. Yes, yeah, she had hid two phones. And I think he might have been looking for the phones. And I and I've said to the this I've asked the cops five thousand times, have you gotten in the no, no, it's gonna take six months. Well, that was eight months ago. So after she went missing, you're saying like uh, the cabin got sold to somebody else? Yes, yes, yes. And then this owner found phones in the insulation. Two phones in the insulation he had. Mm -hmm. So as authorities, do they, are they, they can't get in it because there's codes like there's, you know, even my, my friend I was telling you about that's helped me so much. She said, I could get in it in a minute. And they said, well, no, you can't do that because if the, something's in there, um, you know, it, it wouldn't hold up if you did it. We have to do it by law, which I understand, but okay. It's already been almost eight months now and at least six since they found the phones and they didn't find the phones. This man did. And somebody, they didn't find her personal items in the wood woods, a man walking down his road found that. So they have not found anything. It's other people finding stuff, you know, and it's hers. So we, we talked on the, you know, the live broadcast, remind everyone again, cause it's a new broadcast. You're saying that they found personal belongings of Chelsea in the woods near her home. Yes. It, okay. You got a bluff in the back of them woods. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom is a, a street. Uh, well, kind of like a road. I know. And um, they were kind of off that road. And like the phone charger was thrown into the tree. And then the purse was here and the wallet was on down. When you say thrown in the tree, but the cord was hanging from a tree? Yes. Like I said, it seemed, supposedly it looked like it was staged. Interesting. How far from, wow. how far was it from the house? Uh, well, it, you got to go way, way. You couldn't walk really down there. It's such rough terrain. You'd have to go around to get to that road. But if you could walk, it would be straight down. Yeah, because I saw on the map. So, it, I mean, the whole area around her house is just nothing but hills and woods, correct? Woods. Yeah. And like you said, there's only like five neighbors around there. And I'm going to tell you this straight up. One of the neighbors is a straight felon and how he's still sitting up there. I, I'm like... Why have y'all not even talked to him? You know, and he's into drugs, theft, and doing all that kind of stuff, making meth and stuff. Why is this guy even sitting here still? And uh, supposedly I hear 
that he's a snitch. But what if Chelsea ran up on something and that he didn't like? That's that's the way my head thinks. Of course. Like you said. You think and you think and you think. Yeah, like I said on my closing when the last time I said I said I I, I I'm a, I'm assuming that you and your family is coming up with every single possible scenario because the unknown and you're just thinking anything and everything. Like any yeah. type of thing, like you just said. I mean, uh, maybe she rolled up on a neighbor that was doing something they weren't supposed to be doing and she was a right. quote witness or something. Right. So I don't even know and it's it's my mind, my head. It, it just is everywhere. I don't know. And, you know, they want to assure me, Van Buren, they're doing everything they can. But, you know, I, I just I, I just don't really, I don't know if I trust them. Is it because they, they haven't experienced this type of investigation before? They maybe are in with people, locals there, like a good old boys network, maybe? Um, uh, I that they like the guy sitting up there that's a felon. I think he's a snitch, so they don't mess with him and and so on. And yeah, you know, I could be wrong, whatever. No, I, I we, yeah, this is speculation, of course, you know what I mean, and, and coming up with theories and everything like that and and and, right. and scenarios. Um, so around her house, do you know if authorities got surveillance from any of the neighbors or is there any street lights down there or traffic lights that have cams on there or anything? Okay, here's the thing. I know that guy has game cameras. That day, he happened not to have his game camera on. Do you not find that strange? Yeah. It was this guy friends with... Um, Colby, yes. Yeah. The guy's name is James Robert R Rogers, known as Pistol Pete. Why they call him Pistol Pete? Oh well, he, he's a pretty bad guy, supposedly. So did Pistol Pete talk to the police? See, I asked me. I said, "Why have y'all not brought him in for questioning?" Well, there hasn't been any reason to. B.S. Yes, there is plenty of reason to. Is this a criminal investigation or just a missing person? I think it should be criminal, don't you? Well, the way you described it about her being seen, you know, screaming with a knife and going into the woods is as suspicious as you one could get um, about something very bad going on. When we first went to Arkansas, me and her mother, like two or three days after, uh, they said, oh... Chelsea's just running with the bad crowd. Her, because I said, did you pay her phone? They said, yeah. It, she's turning it on and off. Well, all that was not even true. I don't even know if they pinged it, and they just want to tell us. I guess to get us back to Tennessee, she's just running with the bad crowd. Which now my my niece had gotten in a little trouble. Just what they call it, poor man crimes, like. Um, stupid stuff but you just want to tell us that I felt like just to get us out of town after I see all everything that's been coming together I feel like they just wanted us out of Arkansas so yeah because you guys are more or less like you guys aren't from there um, why are you coming into our town trying to disrupt or cause a ruckus or you know big stink over something um it took forever for them to even notify the state police. They didn't want any help from any other counties or nothing. And the state police didn't even know about it till I don't even know how long. So they were just keeping it within their ranks and their department. Yes, and that to me seems shady. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm trying well, to figure how has the communication been with you in the Van, Van Burr and uh, Sheriff Department? I know. Um, well, uh, one of the one of the uh, detectives, his name is Adams. We communicated, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he called me. He said, "Look, I got a promotion," and um, he said, "I'm going to tell you who you contact from now on, and that's either you know through text or." Um, call. I said, okay, and his name is Matthew. 
my, I say minor key. It's like man key or something. I said, okay. So I've been in contact with this guy. Well, it has gotten to the point lately. I'll throw a text to, hey, any updates, any phone records, and I won't get anything back. A day or so goes by. Won't get even a simple nothing. I don't get nothing back. And uh, so the other day, he proceeds to tell me, uh, listen, if you need to contact someone, you can just call the office because this is my personal number. And sometimes when you text me, I'm at home with my family. That's what he said to me through text. And I said, you know what? After it was a very long text. I said, I'll be praying for you. That's all I could say. Yeah, I, I can imagine, you know, you're just trying to get answers. And it's not like I'm sitting there calling and cussing somebody out or being mean or being rude. It's, I'm not, it's not that way. But you can't, you want me to go ahead and contact someone. I mean, just the office there, not nothing, nobody personal. That's so impersonal, you know, just. They know what we're going through. When did he take over? Is he the lead investigator? Um, I think so. When did he, when did you say he took over? What month uh, was that? I don't know the exact month, but I've been ta talking to him for two, at least a few, couple of months. So sometime this year. Oh yeah. 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 Sure. So, cause we're, t we're approaching what, eight months now since, uh, she went missing. All again, I don't know if I said this at the beginning of this segment, but August twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, and she called nine one one herself. Did yes. did you hear the nine one one call? No, I didn't. Have you asked for it? No, I hadn't. Maybe you should. Yeah. You know, see exactly what 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 are they? So authorities, she called nine one one. For what? What exactly do you, what you heard, what did you hear that she called 911 for? He said to them, Kobe and his posse are here. That's what she said to them. So assuming that she called because she was scared, the protect, protect, protective order, right? There's a protective order between those two. She said posse. So we're talking about him and others. Right. What right. type? What type of vehicles does Kobe have? What at the time? His vehicle. Like a rundown truck. A truck. Yeah, like a rundown type truck. I, I I'd almost say like a a, a primer color, maybe. Hypothetically, mm -hmm. and again, I don't, you know, I don't want to be insensitive, but you know, a, a, a truck where they could put her in the back of the truck and take her to another location. And then, like you said, you know, putting her personal belongings back in the woods, almost in a, like you said before, staged, possibly. Yeah. You don't think the belongings back there was like her herself putting them there? I, I don't. Nobody's heard from her and I, that's not like her. I mean, it just does. That does make sense, you know? Yeah. Her, of her putting her own yeah. belongings, like, you know, get rid of personal belongings of her, I mean, and throwing a charger up in a tree. Right. It looks staged. Or they're trying to get rid of her evidence in one location and get rid of her in another location. Yeah. Do, do you have, do you, do you feel that she's still alive? And I, I don't, you know, I'm just. I know. Um, I don't think she would go this long without talking to any of us or her son. How old's her son? He's 12. How's he holding up? Not good. He was came up to and he stayed with me for a little while after the search, and he's moving back to Tennessee with uh, 
his dad lives here too. So I just hope you see him more. So do you know if the ex, uh, do you know if he got brought in for questioning? Oh, the ex, um, her ex-husband that lives here? No, the, he, you know, when she had oh, Colby. Colby. Yeah, they did question him. And, um, and you know what, if I'm wrong about him, I, I will say I'm so sorry, you know. Um, but um, they said at first I heard he failed the polygraph and then I heard he passed it. Um, you know, they won't tell me, you know, Mikey always said, I'm not a liberty, so I can't tell you that, da, 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 da. but I don't know. I heard he failed, then I heard he passed. So, and then, well, he's out there running around doing free and just nothing. So I don't guess he's worried about too much of nothing. Did he, um, do you know anything about an alibi where he was at the time? He's saying he was in Monticello where this crate was. And, but supposedly he was seen going up that mountain. That's where she lived up that hill. I think it was, uh, that next day, I think, I think it was the next day or the day after that. Which I don't know. He could have been there. He could, she could have been running from him. He could have been, this is my head again. <laughs> He could have been at Pete's house and that Pistol Pete. Oh, Pistol Pete, okay. And she saw him and took off running, screaming, because that's the last that anybody heard of her. And and what happened then, we'll never know because the cops didn't go do anything. And I think there's a law called Billy's Law. I could be wrong, but and that's where you know if you, th you think the person that called nine one one is in danger, no matter what, you're supposed to go and see if they're okay, mm -hmm. and they just let them go. So, so they're saying the police that saw her run in the woods. Yeah, they saw her run by and scream, but they just and they got their microphone, their megaphone. And called her, Chelsea, you need to come out of the woods. And she never did. So they left. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. So actually, in reality, then, the, the authorities, Van Byrne sheriffs, were the last people to technically see her alive. Exactly. So wow. Exactly. I mean, you would think that if she's calling 911, reporting that her ex is there in a posse and she has a knife right. with her and authorities are seeing her run into the woods with a knife. Right. right. That they would at least follow up and right. check see if she's okay. Not the excuse exactly. that you said that they gave you about, oh, she's an adult. Yeah. And they said it's not against the law to run into the woods. And I said, it's not. I said, with a knife. She could have hurt herself. That's another thing. You know, Chelsea could have been a little manic, like a lot of people are a little bit bipolar. You, you needed to see if she needed help. That's what she called you all. The cops, you know. Have they recovered the knife? Them. I don't know. So there, you know there, there's some two things that you could find out. One, try to get the 911 call yourself i think i think that's public information and as you being a family member i would assume that you would have that right to hear the 911 call okay and then you know maybe find out about the knife you know whether it was recovered or not um you know those are those are some suggestions that i can give you based off what you've told me thus far um is it the craziest thing it's the story is you know suspect it's suspicious so and I don't, yeah, so. I, you know, I can't see how, you know, because I've read reports that you guys, you know, the grid searches and, you know, like volunteers came out from all over to help. You would think, yeah. you know, if she self-harmed herself or did something to her own self, you would have found something, evidence of that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you, do you think you exhausted every square inch out there looking in that general area? Well, um, I talked to the lady from Morgan Nick. And she said that uh, Caleb and his dogs are willing to go back out there. But supposedly that day, they did do a lot of searching. Uh, I think four miles this way, four miles that way. Dogs, they had, not only did they have the nine dogs they bring, other people were bringing their personal canines. Mm -hmm. So they had several, several dogs out there going every inch. And they found some bones, but it ended up being animal bones. This search was the March of this year search? Yes. yes. Was there any searches prior to that on a large scale? No. We just really didn't want to do anything. We, we put all this together. And finally, the week before the search, they flew helicopters. And kind of marking off where they were going to go and stuff. And and they post that on their website. Oh, like, look what we're doing. That's really the only thing I've, they've really done, it seems like. Is it, it like, is there, do you think there's wild animal? How's the terrain out there? Is it, like, really rough? I think there is. But then they said that they, there is a cave there beyond that bluff. But they went in there and then they sent dogs in there, too. On the theory, what, that she maybe ran into the cave to hide, maybe? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, maybe you could also request with the sheriff's office, you know, any, you know, all records related to her being missing. Maybe, you know, find out if they check surveillance of any, like, I don't know, where is, where's the closest... Uh, intersection with cameras like as far as like if they have any at all like well uh, I think, like there's a big water tower or something right there and i'm thinking there's a camera on that if i wasn't sure but it's 65 runs right down through there and it's pretty much you're out in between the hills I don't know that, you know, we had a tip at one point. Oh, we saw this girl in Moralton. That's a neighboring town about 30 minutes from there. Well, okay. Called the cops. You know, I told them all about it. This, you know, was through Facebook, I was able to reach out to so many people in Arkansas. And a few people said that. Well, my friend, I told you that has been helping me from Arkansas. Um, finally, she got in touch with the cops in Moralton, and they ne they never even knew nothing about it. Wow. Van Buren acted like, oh, they checked, and that wasn't her. And to come find out, they didn't even know nothing about Chelsea. How does how does that happen? How, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, how, like, has... The media, like I've seen some reports, but has the media been like, you know, putting this out there or like I've seen some reports on the search. But like, have you reached out to the media more to try to get the bigger medias on this? Well, um, you know, I, I, I did two interviews. I did one before the one you did back in. I think it was October. I did a FaceTime interview. The first one for her. And that was with K-A-R-K, -K, Arkansas. And that's who came out for the search. But I have reached out to other people. You know, like you, we even tried to, uh, I even tried like that John Walsh. Yep. And they said, we're sorry, unfortunately. It's just like, um, they only do children. And then, um I, I, I can't even think off the top of my head. I know I've talked to other people. It's very hard to, you know, th there is a lot of missing people. And I guess people did have to pick and choose, you know, which, and I think some of them, 
this this story gets so far fetched. It's like what? And once somebody starts listening to it, like I'm doing now. Wow, this needs to be out there. Absolutely, and that's I, I concur and I agree. I mean, just the fact that she was last seen by authorities running into the woods with a knife is just mind boggling. You know, after she calls and says that you know her her ex that she's has a protective order against is there. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, it's, it's, what what what's your gut telling you here? Do you think there's foul play involved? Yeah, I do. I don't know if it's, you know, the cop. I, I just don't know. You're there. Sorry about that. You're okay. I, um, wait a minute. I lost you. Now I'm here. I can see you. Oh, let me see you. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. Well, here. I can see you. I can't see you, though. Can you see me? <laughs> no, it's it's me. I told you earlier I'm not a very good, uh, I'm not that. Well, it might be your connection. Can you see me now? Oh, there, 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 there. There you are. Okay. okay. All right, great. Uh, anyways, um, I just, yeah, I think there's um, some shady business going on. Uh, even with the cops, even with their ex, it's almost like that, you know, are they together on this? Did something happen and they're covering it up because they did drop the ball and not do what they should have done? Yeah. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So what's next? Like, what what's the next plan of action here? Well, I want to know what's in that trunk, that crate. And have you so, and have you spoken to Cody? Kobe, I did. Kobe, I'm sorry, Kobe. I didn't for a long time, and then once I've just got so frustrated at one point. Oh, he wants to talk to me and my sisters and stuff. My, I have another sister too, and I got so frustrated one night. I said, "Where is she, Kobe?" I said, "Because I'm coming back to Arkansas and hit." Hell's coming with me. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know, Renee. I don't know where she's. And he'll cry. That's why I don't know. He said, I love Chelsea. I don't know. But then again, he could be playing me. Um, she's gone. Colby's K O L B Y or C O L B Y? C. C O L B Y. Okay. Um, What's his background? I mean, is it is it shady? Not good. He's been arrested, 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 arrested. You know, and a lot of it's domestic on different women. And that's not suspect the police. <laughs> right, right. I don't, I don't understand. Have you maybe reached out to some of the the, the girls that he had problems with and kind of talked to them and try to get some insight on possibly? more about Colby's character? Well, I kind of know. I mean, he, you know, he would get drunk. He's got several, several DUIs, which whatever, if you want to drink, but he's got a lot of DUIs and then he gets real violent with these women. And, you know, I can remember him and Chelsea arguing, but I never knew it was to that point until later. She said, Hey, you just don't know how he's, Talking to me, Renee, and I, yeah, I wish I knew then what I do know now, you know, and it was like she was his property and he would, he didn't want anybody, you know, he even got in a fight with that Pistol Pete, aka James Rogers, because he took Chelsea somewhere, give her a ride somewhere, but I don't know. I, I I don't. He's crazy. Sounds like to me. He's just I, crazy. How did they meet? I don't. I don't remember. How long were they know, with each other? Like before, six, before she went missing. Six years. Six years. Mhm. Mm yeah. 
And they've been to Tennessee. They lived here for a bit. Then they went back to Arkansas. So, is, I don't know. Like, has he been with, is he with a new uh, female now? Or is he still, is he single? Well, he, he said to me, he he's not seeing anybody. I said, but I know that's a lie because you took somebody with you up on that hill. And because he... He hit that girl in the eye, knocked her eye out of socket. Who? That's what I found that out in the midst of all this. And her name is Haley something. Yeah. This was after Chelsea went missing. He supposedly went back up that hill. To get the property. Sarah. Was he with her to get that property of uh, Chelsea's property? Yep. Yep. And to me that, and see right there. They should have had to. I would have thought they would have had like duct tape, not duct tape, yellow tape around that property. Yeah. But no, they didn't do anything like that. They, I feel like the cops did not care one bit. So they kind of just, and you're maybe like just treated it as just a woman that just ran off, like a missing woman. Oh, she's running with the wrong crowd. That's what they told us. Running with the bad crowd. Well, you know, nobody's perfect. But she's running with the wrong crowd. She'll show back up. Now I'm thinking, did you even look? No. So is the Arkansas State Police involved? Do they have a state police in Arkansas, like a state troopers? Yes. Are they so the police didn't find out until later. And I, I thought they were in touch with the state police. No, they weren't even in touch with the state police for the longest. Van Buren wasn't wanting any help. So there you go. I don't, why, why wouldn't you want the help? And now I think they know that all this is coming to a head. And like I said, they dropped the ball in the very beginning. And it don't look good on them. It sounds like it sounds like you're not going to give up. You're going to use all your resources, I guess, and your power to figure out what happened to Chelsea. Yeah, I don't have much. I mean, I can do what I can do, but you know what? I'm going to do my very best, my very best. And I want if something's wrong happened to my niece, I, I want justice for her. And I won't give up, no matter what. Please don't. No, I won't. So, I just, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. So were you guys close? You and Chelsea close? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I talk to her all the time. What are you doing? Oh, no, what are you doing? And we'd play this game together that was on the phone and uh, just I miss her so much. I can't even I can't even I, I would have never ever thought I'd be going through this. You never ever know. Renee, do you think um, are you going to do another search out there? Are you going to try to organize it? Or do you think that's pointless at this point? Or do you think you might do another one? I don't know. I'm going to be back in touch with the Sean, the, the lady from the Morgan Nick. I told you that, uh, you know, they have all the dogs. And I might see, you know, when they would like to go try and do another search and run the dogs again, just in case we miss something, you know. What was the name of that organization? Called the Morgan Nick Foundation. Morgan Nick. Now, um, I saw a report. Who who was Morgan Nick? Okay, Morgan Nick Foundation. This lady started that because her daughter, about 20 years ago, was a little girl. And she was catching fireflies at a ballpark. This man kidnapped her and killed her. And they never found that child. I don't, yeah, I don't think, they never found her. And so, like, 
when I got to Arkansas, they had a basket waiting for me and they had a jar with lights in it and that was like fireflies. So they help a lot, you know. That's good, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I saw some of the shirts that they were wearing. Yeah. You know, when they were out there searching. How many people came out in March to search? They said it was the biggest search in 20 years. In the whole state? Or is it there? I think in the whole state. What? Hundreds. Okay, we, we were at that church. It's a pretty big church. I can't think it. I can't even think right now the name of it. But um, they were having to, to divert traffic down the road. There was so many people that showed up. Um, military, you know, everything. Everybody. Everybody was showing horses, up. Horses come? Horses. You know what? The horses never did come. I think the terrain was too bad because I had called that Texas group. Um, search. Yes, yes. But the terrain was too rough for the horses. But um, they were very nice. Very nice. But there was so many people. I was overwhelmed and so thankful and grateful for the people that did come, you know. Absolutely. No, it's just people that um care. For instance, uh there was a young um young 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 boy that was uh went missing in um in the evening time where I live, um in Hernando County, little JJ, and he wandered off his property and the amount of people just from all walks of life coming to help and assist to find this little boy. You know, it, it, it was like unfortunate tragedy, but it brought the community together. And I was yeah. just so amazed to see the outpouring of people, strangers from all across Florida going to help find this young child. Um, so yeah, people genuinely care, you know, and this is why it's important, I think, to get the, these, this message out from families that might not necessarily get the attention like other cases get, um, because every life matters, you know, uh, Chelsea has a family. She has, she, she has you, she has her mom. She has a family. Her life matters. And yes. you guys deserve answers. You really do. Yeah. I wish I had a it's just every day, every day, you know, you goes by. It's just like, where is she? You know? Do you think the FBI would take this case or is it an FBI I case? Called, I called them and they said, stay in touch with your local police. But that was in the beginning, you know? And I. It's it's hard to stay in, with cops like I'm having to deal with it, babe. Now I'm gonna say this. Dan, um, his name's Eric Koontz. That's the new sheriff at Van Buren County. He's a nice man, you know. I he came in late because. I think there's been a couple of cops that's either retired or quit since this happened now. And that's kind of odd a little to me because I, I see, I see how I feel like they're so shady a little bit. And, but Eric, he, he was very nice to me. I met him at the search. He was doing some of the interview on that one interview I had. So, mm. I don't know. It's it's hard. I, I feel like I have tried to call and contact everybody I can even possibly think of. And I know there's more. <laughs> I just have to and I and I appreciate you so much for uh, even getting it out. I appreciate you, you know, for sharing this 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 trap this story. It's a it's a travesty all across the board on numerous fronts. And, I, you know, you guys just want some closure and some answers, you know, and I'll do my best to put it out there. And I want to yeah. follow up with you. You know, I, I want to follow up with you. You know, definitely keep me informed on any new searches or new developments or if something's going on, like if there's an investigation and someone's being looked at or like you said, with the crate 
and stuff yeah. like that. That that's let's keep this going. Let's keep Chelsea's name out there. I'm gonna you know put this out there. I'm gonna put her image out there. Um, you know, somebody in Arkansas might see this um and 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 know something. Um maybe somebody we don't even know that's even involved that might have saw something, you know, and, and can give some valuable information to help, you know, get answers for you guys. Right. Right. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Uh, Craig, if you want me to. Sure. Thank you, Renee. We'll talk soon. Just stay. Right. stay. I'm, I'm going to pray for you, Renee. Pr pray for your family. For sure. I'm so sorry, you know, and um, just don't give up hope. Just just stay optimistic and, you know, use, use, you know, that every day to just stay positive. Just stay positive. I will. And thank you again. And God bless. God bless you. And we'll talk to you, okay? All right, Renee. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Praying for Renee and praying for Chelsea's family. If you have any information about Chelsea Woods, contact authorities immediately. Just share what you know. Someone out there knows something. You saw how devastated her family is. I'm going to keep following up on this story. Um, subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. She said she'll talk to me again if there's any new developments. So stay tuned for that. Just say a prayer for Chelsea and her family. We'll talk soon. Everyone stay tuned. God bless.